GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Star Trek, The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of the GNT show. Our continuing mission, to explore Star Trek storytelling. To seek out new worlds and interesting characters. To boldly go where no show has gone before. Naomi, Naomi Wildman. I was setting it up. Oh. Welcome to the GNT show where obviously we have no script. Yeah, let's just get this puppy started. This is always the beautiful, the lovely, the high booted, short skirted, and big breasted Terry Lynn. <laughs> that would be me. Admiral Shaw. She badass. It's Serenium <laughs> Cup. Day. Good morning. It's Sunday on the GNT show. You know the worst part of this morning? It's not the getting up early, it's the fact they're making me wear clothes to do the show. It's time for coffee class. <laughs> Strap on your helmets, boys and girls. It's gonna get rough. Oh, it's gonna be one of those mornings. Let me put on my seatbelt, my helmet, with a little blinky light on top. For safety. Well, Dude. we decided. <laughs> we were going to do the GNT show. Man. One of the things we said was no standards. GNT show does not go on the air because we're ready. It goes on the air because it's nine o'clock on Sunday morning. Mike could have snapped by then and killed us both. Pain sticks for Mike, evidently. <laughs> we have our production meetings on the air. Well, it's the best way to get you to adhere to things. Yeah, you've now set be. an expectation. Oh, That's the thing about disclaimer. the GNT show is we set no expectations. I need more coffee. Wow. This... I'm trying to figure out whether or not I want to do general news or Star Trek news, and I figured. This is Terry having. Okay. A series of small it's strokes, news. actually. Well, it doesn't take long for this show to, to deteriorate, <laughs> does it? Straight the fuck downhill. <laughs> I don't always podcast, but when I do, I GNT. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the GNT Show, episode 204. I'm Terry Lynn. Jolan True, citizens. This is Gettysburg 7. And there she is to my left, your right, this week wearing a stunning recreation of the, uh, the Mad Max Fury Road outfits. It's Terry Lynn. Yay. Okay. <laughs> the, the white gossamer gowns. Mm-hmm. Oh, very Does nice. Does that mean I'm going to die? No. No, they, they don't die. Oh, I don't okay, think. Well, one did. of them does. Oh. Least and to my them. right, your left, there he is wearing a tuxedo with brown shoes. It's Ceridium. And I've got the, 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 the Bane mask on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if we were talking uh, Mad Max, I, I, I thought I'd go with it, you know? <laughs> that guy Anything with Tom the, Hardy? That guy with the... the, the Bane mask was freaky looking, I'm telling you. Oh, oh, in the... In, the in Mad, Mad Max. Max, yeah. I swear you could have been Klingon. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> what are you wearing, Daddy's Nothing. <laughs> As always, I'm I, ready for a Betazoid I, wedding. I heard from a little, a little bird that you're looking for a particular kind of fabric. Somebody needs to keep her chirping down. Well, I was helping her out. A particular oh. kind of what? No, no, it's something I'm working on with Lori. It's a oh. secret. It's a with secret. With the Ferris anomaly. Oh. The Ferris anomaly and, and, and Gettysburg are, are working on a secret project. We're conspiring, like two Ferengi oh. in the dark. So, uh, quick question about Betazoid weddings. Are ties optional? There are no ties. Darn. I didn't say where it had to be, but... <laughs> there are no ties. Okay. Not even bow ties? It's Terry, yeah, how you was your week? think about it. No, a Betazoid wedding's got to be really, really funny for the Betazoids who have you know, the other species. As a, you know, as a mate? They can pretty much no, just no. I mean, just people in the audience kind of thing. Hey, can you imagine? I mean, I mean, you get you have to read their thoughts anyway, right? You're a Betazoid, mm -hmm. so you know how they're feeling. That's got to be at the same time funny and sad. I don't know. I think Doctor Ree would like it. Oh, Ree? God, yeah, be all over it, walking in, strutting all proud. Finally finished. As with oh, I finally got that damn uniform off. Lizard boy is here. Lizard boy is here. <laughs> I'm just going to sun this on a rock. <laughs> Locks would be twirling his. Oh my god, too funny. And if you don't know who Dr. Ree is, you really need to read the books. From Titan. So awesome. He'd be all picking his teeth. <laughs> we don't want to say with what. Oh, it's too funny. Oh, I remember that little gremlin from the Looney Tunes. Somebody posted one of the gremlins. Well, it's time for Coffee Clutch. How are you two gentlemen? How was your week? Es bueno. <laughs> yeah. Alan's feeling the same way. I or... And now uh, that uh, tomorrow starts the start of the last month of the fiscal year, so... Yay. Um, yeah. Get through it. Ugh. <sighs> 
<laughs> and then um, October is no better because you're the start of the fiscal year. What was it? Oh, I was going to talk about my week, but Go I'll wait till Nick's done. Oh, no. Nick? No, that's, that's all. That was just, it? Yeah, ah. it's going to be brutal. Oh, and we got sued. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, by we the got way. sued. <laughs> Class action lawsuit. Oh, boy. That has no oh. chance at all. I guess that's good. Uh, it's just a fucking waste of fucking time. Yeah. It and takes money. up a whole lot more energy and that can and be money. devoted to other things. Money. Yeah. And money. Yeah. yeah. They're expensive. Well, let's see. Um, I finally, finally, after like three weeks, I finally got my the issue resolved that was keeping me from access, accessing our webpage. So uh, that's been resolved. And... Uh, Ever since, I've been kind of fine-tuning, tweaking, making changes to our our website. Yes, it's looking quite beautiful. Huh, there, there's you. some further changes coming up, but nothing... Well, I, would, I think they're kind of... Well, they will be. They're going to be kind of dramatic. People are really going to see them and go, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, hopefully, hopefully um, it'll turn out. Um, we need to talk about that after the show, though. Um, but yeah, so did that. Um, we got some new bumpers that we'll be show, uh, showcasing sometime in the near future. Um, I finished up the last of those. Um, what else have I done this week? Um, I think that's the, 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 the biggest part is uh, just finally being able to work on some GN, long-awaited GN thing, GNT stuff. Well, it was nice to, um, again, a big thanks to Steve and Janet Oh yeah, helping, for helping out while all of that was going on. I know it wasn't easy for you, and I'm glad that you seem to have gotten through it, that it seems to have fixed the problem. Yeah, they had to go in and, and explicitly give me permission to access the web server. Wow. I don't know why, what happened there, but um, yeah, it was just, it was just the oddest thing. I was just... I was getting lost on, on route. It was just, yeah. I need breadcrumbs. That's what I freaking need next time. <laughs> so I don't get lost. Very, very strange. Well, that very would be strange. like somebody making a big mine in Minecraft and not making a path for how they got in and out. Not that I know anybody that would do that. <laughs> Sounds like my nephews. And then complain, I'm lost. I can't get out of this mine. Not mentioning any names, <laughs> but she's awful pretty. And she's very sweet. Every mind should have t a, w a way in and a way out. <laughs> well, what I do is I, I use the dirt blocks to make basically a, a guide. So it's at the same level. So basically you've got stone and then the dirt so you can follow in and out. So you know which way Bread you're going. Crumbs. Because, you know, you don't want to be like, look, kids, there's Big Ben in Parliament again. <laughs> I can't get out of this roundabout. Roundabout. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I'm not mentioning any names. But I will say this: so Naomi and I are are, are playing in a Greek mythology skinned world, and oh, we have plans. There's two villages near us, and we we going to be building a metropolis. Oh, how fun! Yeah, and we will be kind and benevolent dictators, of course. Of course, she's the kind, and well. Hey, I'm the one that plants their food for them. Of course. So that I can steal it later. <laughs> <laughs> but the Greek mythology one, Terry, it's very cool. It's got griffins and everything. How fun. Right on. Yeah. I take it that's a picture of Washington? All the fires going on. It's Dr. Ruth's vagina. Oh, dude. Uterus! Western Washington is on fire. Hidden. Well, we were the getting state, smoke here. The state. The state is on fire. Sorry. Well, we were. Today's probably one of the first days where, um, beer. What the fuck is oh, Robert definitely. Reyes talking about? An apple has just as much caffeine as a cup of coffee? I don't think you've drank Death's Head coffee or whatever the name of it is, Robert. <laughs> oh, well. So let's get to Death some Wish. Star Trek. Death what? Wish coffee. Death Wish? Death Wish coffee. Look it up. Not it's badass, good. I'm just saying. It's good. Be a badass coffee down here. Well, Death's Wish you can order if you order it online. Oh, okay. Yeah. Badass, it's... you have to go to their little shop. I miss, I miss I miss the alcohol store there, where Jim Ferris and I can just run around being silly. Oh, total wine. That great. Uh, Isn't that place great? Awesome. And and that girl with the the handouts. 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, would you like to try this? <laughs> no, we still have beer. Oh, I'm not surprised after the way that fucking was filled. <laughs> the fridge. It was filled. But I bet you the root gone. The who? The root beer. Oh, the root beer beer? Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Vanilla I, ice cream. <laughs> I think yeah, I vanilla. finished off the, the, the root beer beer when I was there. I think you did. That was good stuff. <laughs> the hard root beer. It mm -hmm. was hard root beer. That's what it was. I, I do like my drinks on the hard side. Yeah. Like yeah. your men. Like your men. <laughs> no. <laughs> you like your men soft? I like Weird. my women. No, 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 no. You said. <laughs> uh, let's get to some Star Trek news. Yes, let's. Please. Star Trek news. All right. So sometime this week, we're going to be releasing, uh, unless we have already. Did we already release our um our our second thing for? Federation of Beer? Um, it's no. not October yet, and that's what I was under the impression we were waiting for. Well, I don't think we need to wait anymore. Ooh, okay. So I've um, got to get that ready. And uh, and the reason why is because they've announced it. So yay! Here's right our on. friends over at Federation of Beer um, uh, on the release of their next beer, really. So they just came out with a Orion Syndicate, S-I-N, which I thought this week they have re come out with and have announced the Genesis effect. It is, they're partnering with Schmaltz Brewing Company in New York, which we knew that they were going to be doing. And Schmaltz and Pep Incorporated. Um, so it is the Genesis effect red IPA. So that's four beers now. Bulk and Ale, Klingon, Warnog, mm -hmm. Orion Syndicate, and Genesis effect. Right on. Very cool. Right on. Congratulations, guys. In Star Trek news today, Terry... It is Thomas the Cat's birthday. Happy birthday, Thomas. Happy right birthday. On. She's too good for you. Happy birthday. She really is too good for you. Oh. <laughs> right? But, he, he admitted it. <laughs> but I love him, too. I don't want him to... No, I no, think, I love I Thomas. Think she, I think she's lucky, too. I'm just saying. New Star Trek products are coming in soon. So this week on StarTrek.com, uh, how last week I gave you guys the link for the uh, Star Trek store with all of the new or featured items that they had there. This week, StarTrek.com is um, pushing, I should say, the really cool stuff that people have been making and have been creating and are now licensed to sell through Cafe Press. And it's a whole bunch of really cool bathroom accessories and decor so it's been pretty cool um paste that into the chat room so the um there's uh bath mats and shower curtains and i love the elkar shower curtain i think that's really cute there's beach towels all sorts there's a klingon bath mat just really cute stuff that you can uh, can purchase it looks right like uh, the the shower curtains run about 55 bucks beach blankets run about 37 let me just say bath if you get the ferengi if you get the Ferengi Trek shower curtain, there's something really wrong with you. That is <laughs> that is frightening. Where? I don't see it. Page two. Oh, there's a page two? Look at all these. Wow. They're great. Now, on yeah. page three, the all insignia the shower curtain is very cool. I still haven't seen the Ferengi one. Captain Vulcan Expendable, the sheep. Got the little target on it. <laughs> these are cute. Well... Um, if you guys didn't know, remember a long time ago and how I used to get a lot of my Star Trek mugs was through Cafe Press because people were using um, Star Trek items or Star Trek logos and stuff like that and putting it on their, their Cafe Press and um, purchasing them that way. And for the longest time, um, well, it was just kind of a hog wild experience. We're just doing it. Um, and Cafe Press kept getting nasty grams from CBS going, dudes, you can't sell stuff with our trademarks on it. And Cafe Press was like, we keep trying to close these people down, but it's likewise, it's kind of impossible. Well, in in the truest fashion of professional, uh, how should I say, spirit of cooperation, uh, CBS and Cafe Press had come to an agreement that you can create your own Star Trek 
what the, what CBS does is says, okay, Cafe Press takes control. You can create your own Star Trek stuff, and um, but it it CBS gets the cut. Usually, Cafe Press you did, right? Now CBS gets their cut. So do, do they get a piece of it or all of it? I'm just wondering. I'm I don't know what the actual arrangement is through the contract, but. The, the money, the, the money, the money is definitely going to yes, and I'm sure that Cafe Press bought a license to yeah. be able to do it. But I mean, you'd it, figure they a, would have it to. Is, it is truly, and I pardon the pun on this, but it really is the best of both worlds. So you can go in, and Uh-oh. so that's why some of these um, uh, logos and things on these shower curtains look like I, I can't believe that CBS would make that. The one with the sheep is hilarious. I would totally buy that. But it's that was a creation by somebody else, but because they were using the trademark and it has to be tagged Star Trek, it gets funneled oh through this. Oh my goodness! Isn't it cute? There's a sh- there's a shower curtain, Kirk and Spock. The the the, the, the two emblems, Kirk and Spock. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of it just I don't know. For a moment there, I had flashes of Slash. I'm sure you did. I'm sure we all did. <laughs> But either way, that's where all of these logos are coming from. A lot of these were created by CBS. A lot of them were created by uh, people who had already made them for um, Cafe Press. And you can take any of these logos and put them on mugs or T-shirts or shower curtains. Or you can take any one of them them on any product, which I think Ooh. is great. So if you like, say, the Borg um, shower curtain, you don't have to get the shower curtain. You can take that. Um, Borg item and place it on other accessories or sport. They have a spork shower curtain. Yeah, it's a, it's a spork. <laughs> well, these are all of those logos like that have been kind That's of awesome. shifted through the approved cycle, so it it works out pretty well. But I was just I was I love the fact that they've got you know new products now too with the shower curtains and the bath mask. Very cool. Very cool. Um, another new piece of news that came out. Uh, for those of you with an Android, uh, Star Trek themes are now available through Swipe. Is an app that you can purchase through the, the your your Google or not your Google, yeah your Google your Android market Google Play. So it's something that people have been really asking for. Has been uh, Star Trek key, uh, keyboard themes, new emoji keyboard, which is cool. so anybody's got an Android and finally wants to get access to some. Star Trek emoji and wipe has available now and purchase it from the Google play store for 99 for how much you can out there 99 cents and consider mine purchased. Yeah, no kidding. Um, a little bit of new news, Star Trek.com. There is a new film with Peter Weller that features Peter Weller and Ron Perlman, both of whom are Star Trek veterans and it's called skin trade. Oh, it's out on Blu-ray and DVD now. That out of you. Speaking of uh, of films, there's been a lot of ink this week. Yeah. Do you wanna Do you wanna touch on on that? I would. Uh, the, I'll have Mike put the links into the chat room. The reason yeah. why I'm not bringing them up on my um, is for some reason I have to reboot my computer for the new Google code to take place. And beware, a couple of these you guys, they sound with them. You know, they have the autoplay um, videos. So we apologize for that. I don't bring those up because when I'm recording it, it's terribly distracting. Yeah. So um, which one do you want to start off with first, the positive one or the critical one? Which one came out first? I want to say the positive one. No, the critical one. Yeah, the, I think um, – well, the I didn't consider it. The first one that I saw, I can share that one. Okay. Is that the one, Mike, that I said I thought was pretty balanced? Probably, um, yeah. although that could have been the second. Let me let me uh, grab the link here. Because it was the rap was the first one, right? Yeah, the the rap was the first one that I have here. Yeah, this was the one I called the critical one. See, I thought it was pretty balanced. It well, I mean, it, no, it no, was. I mean, as in critical thinking. Oh yeah, it yeah. it was pretty balanced. Um, uh, and and since then they've gotten, I guess somewhat more negative because I've been having conversations with uh, various people um, wondering, you know, what's going on? <laughs> why, why is Axanar being attacked? <laughs> I, I, well, if someone feels that way, they're not being attacked, but when you become high profile, you become the object of much more scrutiny. 
That's exactly right. Yep. That is you know, exactly the, right. And and the Florida Marlins are not looked at the same way the the Houston the Astros are. Right or the now. Yankees. Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. Well, right, yeah, because the Astros are in first place in their division. Mm-hmm. So. It's true. It, it and and this is something that um uh but now the cinnamon blend one cracked me up because I was like it, it, they're they're getting really artful with their um, headlines because it, first and foremost everybody um the the one thing that we will keep going over and one thing that pisses me off to no end is when a journalist doesn't do their fucking research okay and that's that. all of them there are four links in, in the chat room now <laughs> all right and um, sorry, I, yeah. before you before you say I wanna I got a private message this week from somebody that and I'm gonna just distill it down to its its transporter essence. Yes. We are not attacking Axnar, we are not no. praising continues. We are commenting on what is out there. Right. We have never done anything but say Look we at Axanar. If you want to support it, support it. If you don't, don't. Same with Continue. Same with Phase 2. Same with Horizon. Same with Farragut. Da 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 da. Yes. Do not think because we've talked more about Axanar in these articles, we're attacked. We are not. We are staying truly neutral. Do we have friends and good friends that work on some of these? Absolutely. Yes, we do. In but both, have in you all. Heard? We have yeah. good friends in Farragut. We have good friends in Axanar. We have very good friends in, in Continues. We have very good friends in Phase 2. I mean, and it, I does, challenge, it truly does and not matter. We love I challenge them all. anyone who thinks that we are supporting one or the other and we the have... other to show where we have said don't watch this one we We've have had... tried to get uh, interviews with with all the productions. Yes. Uh, for whatever reason, not we and, haven't always been always able to secure them, it, but we do try to get them onto the show to give them an opportunity and, and to talk about their show. And in 2014, Axanar had some of their things hanging in our booth. So yeah. while well, we had somebody from another production as our guest in our booth. Right. So don't if you think anything other, <laughs> do not. It show show us where we've said yes this one no that one because exactly. you can't so take my advice and go find a big gorn dildo and shove it up your ass so kind of getting back to what i was saying yes. though is and it goes along with what nick was saying is that it bothers me when journalists don't do their research because you will notice that in at least two or uh, two or three of the articles that you have posted links for mike uh, there is a very poorly, poorly researched idea of who is, once again, well, in charge, right? That somehow that there is some kind of an idea that Paramount is, is a player. Paramount is a player to a degree. I think Bad Robot's a bigger player than Paramount is, per se. Um, and once again, it comes down to people's misunderstanding of CBS's ability and desire to control the IP. And once again, in two of those articles at least, there is a mention that somehow CBS um, has, has, has given its blessing. Do you believe that? There's two of those articles that said, oh, CBS has kind of given a de facto blessing to these productions, which is so not the case. They have just not, not they have just, how do I say that? They just haven't. If you want to take silence as down. consent, then go ahead. Yeah, they're not. It's not right. consent, though. As a matter no, of fact, but recently, I'm saying if someone wants to take silence as consent, then that's their problem. Right. And that's and there's the difference. Is somebody says, "Oh, they haven't said anything," therefore, and I'm like, "No, they haven't said anything because it's better not to right now." There's really. The the idea is as long as you don't make any money off of the uh, production, it's okay. The one article is brilliant though, which is something we've already touched upon in the show, and that is don't don't count those chickens, everybody, as it's still possible at any given time for CBS, who owns the well, owns the name, owns the rights to merchandise, owns it, owns it, be able to say. Okay, you know what? We're done. You don't get to do this anymore. And it's a lot of these gray areas right now that are coming out, which are just because the production house doesn't make any money doesn't mean that other people are not. Namely, build the sets, the people 
act in them, people who do voices in them, people who um, have taken a salary, made the production of, and there's an argument that can be made that the investors are. Investors meaning the donators for the Kickstarter campaign. They're getting t-shirts and patches and that they are giving tangible items that could be perceived as an award or an income. Well, yeah, if you if you're on let's say I'm making a fan production, uh Star Trek Romulus, okay? And somehow I get uh a de- <laughs> um he's fantasizing now, folks. No, I uh, <laughs> if somehow I get Dina Meyer to reprise her role as Denatra. Right. He was fantasizing. For, for, for my yes. fan production. No, hold on. But I pay her union scale. Right. What is – is she not profiting off of or making money off of that then? And that's – and there is that argument that could absolutely be made. Now, CBS I has at this point why. in time, they're not – they're not moving forward with it because they don't – I think it's a PR thing. I think it's a brilliant PR thing, and that is, you know, right now, it, CBS isn't isn't afraid of nor does it hate um, fan creativity. The, the, the problem will become like it was with the Aliens production when they reach a certain level of money involvement and so many people start getting paid to use an IP – that somebody else owns, there there becomes a a concern, an absolute concern. So that's why Axonar right now, because they're the ones that have, have already spent or at least have already received one million dollars and have already um, had their second Kickstarter campaign, which crossed a half a million, correct, Mike? Um, after the Kickstarter, they did reach the half million. They point. reached the half million. Point. Axanar right now is the Titanic of fan films. It truly is. Yeah. Now, is that not to say that everything that the the, the scenes that we have seen have been just spectacularly <laughs> brilliant? Beautiful. They're just fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and and fans really are getting what they're paying for, right? That they're mm-hmm. seeing what they want this super high production, um, so they're willing to to fork over their own money to go see it. It is um, awesome. It really is awesome. But because of the amounts of money that are, that are involved, they have become the A, num- A number one target for journalists to scrutinize because there's more money involved than there is, say, with Continues or even Farragut. Farragut doesn't bring in a lot of stuff, not because they're not good, but because there's just not a whole lot of money to make it juicy for the story. Um, P.F. Dennis uh, says CBS could do a number of things, demand royalties or possibly buy and distribute the film outright. I, I was just thinking, could, couldn't they like develop a kind of uh, pseudo license for fan productions based on, for instance, um, kind of like a sliding scale where if their production develops so much or – you know, have, no. if they have a Kickstarter and they bring in so much money, uh, a certain portion of it would go to, go to CBS? No. No. And the okay. reason why is because a pseudo license is still a license, which means mm-hmm. it would be an official production. Don't you ah. think that would throw the fandom into a tizzy? Yeah, I suppose that would. Okay. Like, what do you mean you're making canon? I swear to God. That's and, then, and then why doesn't my fan fiction count? Right. And it, it opens up and Pandora's how, box. Exactly. So all I have to do is pay so many thousands of dollars to be an official production? No. That would never happen. Ever. Okay. So um, it is, it's a, an interesting revenue stream for CBS. But, <laughs> you know, if you want to water down your product. But they're not going to. And, yeah. and, and sounds to me just, and again, I have not seen the contracts. And I don't know what it is. But I am hearing things in the background, everybody. That there is a nifty, and by nifty I mean, wow, uh, contract between Bad Robot and uh, CBS. And oh, so well, that's why we're not getting any TV shows, right? There is mm. the idea that that Bad Robot has an agreement with CBS that CBS won't produce a television show until the movies are done, which means that at its earliest now we won't see anything nineteen when number four comes out because they've already contracted Pine and Quinto for the fourth film. I, that's that's both 
good, but and at the same time, it makes me so sad. So sad. <laughs> so um, now I'm sure there's a carve back in there that if CBS decided to create a series based on the JJ verse, I'm sure that that would not that wall would not be there. Oh, so so th- it's possible that it it's only preventing Prime Universe from yes. being created. Absolutely. Ah, and that's and kind of where CBS is. Which would make sense CBS considering that blo- JJ hated TOS. Remember, they mm-hmm. had a huge fight over whether or not CBS would merchandise any original series merchandise anymore based yeah. on the original based on the original and, series. And and Prime Universe is still CBS's bread and butter, I believe. Oh uh, yeah. I'm so, sure. May, I'm sure that they sell shit tons more of, of original series stuff. Like, that's like what's that's, being produced. Like that was very, um, very uncaring of you towards people with gluten issues. Oh, I, I, I apologize. I did not mean to <laughs> single anyone out. Just saying. In this world, we must be careful. Uh, so those was, with gluten allergies. Don't make me would, threaten you with with with, with a bag of peanuts. With Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Why a bag of peanuts? Because there are also people with peanut allergies. Oh, I see. (laughs) I thought you were trying to bring it to my bag of oranges. No. Oh, boy. Don't hurt anybody, Nick. Yeah, we definitely don't want to hurt nobody. But (laughs) this is not Axanar being picked on. This is Axanar is right now the highest profile. It really is. And that's They have the biggest target painted on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Right? I mean... If if they do have a target painted on them and they and they are responding, I think you know well to a to a degree pretty well. There's a couple of there's a couple of people involved in Axanar that I kind of they they post things on Facebook and I smack my head going, oh don't you're lowering yourself you're lowering yourself you know but, yeah you know whatever that's that's. Uh, yeah, and uh, for the I'll most tell you part, what... most everybody's reacting professionally. Some, I'll tell you what really so grinds my gears is when someone is, say, a fan of Axanar, and then in the comments section of like the rap article, their first comment is, "I wonder who planted this story from another production." I know. You know what? An... Stop it. I know. Get your fucking head out of your ass. Hey, look, fan production has raised over a million dollars. There's a story for the trade press. It has nothing to do with other fan productions. It has to... Okay, is Night of the... Night of the Fire Ants made for $10,000 getting the same press as fucking Civil War? No. And you know why? Because Civil War has a target. Marvel has a target in the same way. Yep. It's yep. high profile and they have not stumbled yet. Yeah. I thought they would with Ant-Man. And they didn't. No. And I'm and convinced at this point they could put out a movie about a poker playing mouse and it would fucking rule. <laughs> <laughs> you know Pixar what? It was probably like that totally for a moved. long time. Yeah. Pixar didn't stumble for a long time. They had a target. A target is not necessarily a negative, people. A target means it's in the eye. It's in the consciousness. Right. And yeah. it's, and it's is successful. very much in the public, the Star Trek public's consciousness. Right. Because it is successful. And it is successful because they've generated so much interest and so much money. So congratulations to them. And and we're really hoping to see more of the, the more of the information that comes out. I know that they received half of their second Kickstarter funding, which is great. That means they're going to get two, I guess, episodes. Is how they're breaking it down now. Uh, it's, it, two, it's two episodes, um, but basically, it's half the film. Is it's, from what I understand. Right. They're not changing the story, right? No. Okay. It, it's just they they realize that in order to produce the whole thing, the in the the quality that they they are shooting for, um, they can't get it all in one shot. So the easiest way the to, to pretty much guarantee a product, the, the the full thing is to break it up into at least four pieces, and uh, and have those reasonable goals, you know, be achieved. Right. Well, they achieved the first two, which means that there'll be at least one more um, 
Kickstarter or, or, or fundraiser at some point in the future for, for the remaining half. Right. So we will see uh, when that is. Hopefully, I, pre- I don't think they're going to have a problem as long as that first uh, that first piece of it comes out with the quality of that teaser. Mm-hmm. If, if that first episode or, or first piece of the film comes out and it's of the same quality that we saw in the Vulcan teaser, they're going to get their money. Yeah. People are going to pay for it. Absolutely. Oh, because yeah. Because it's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. So, so and, to the to, – yeah, go ahead, Nick. And Continues is a whole different animal. Totally. Totally. Than Axanar, as is Farragut, They're not as trying is Phase 2. Yeah. And speaking of Phase 2, I knew I do need one to put this out there while we can. Um, our good friend James Colley, who, of course, is the guy responsible and probably one of the very first – High-profile uh, fan productions. Talk about a guy who's walked on the on the fire rocks, right? Yes. He was the he was the path uh, finder. He really went out. The originator, and, almost. The originator. Kind of he certain. really. Well, I don't want to say he was the originator. He, he wasn't, wasn't the, the only, originator, but he's. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. the only fan production guy out there. But he was the first truly targetable one because he was getting um, a lot of attention and a lot of attention and therefore drew a lot of scrutiny and a lot of hate because people didn't like the quality or they didn't like something else but then there was a lot of fans who were like oh my god i'm getting the star trek i missed he drew a lot of amazing writers including david gerald to his production to create new stories for um or even better that they're to use scripts that were actually owned by CBS and then not used for the, uh, and unfortunately they had to shut down on that one, which was mm-hmm. sad, but they got new stories on um, and, and putting forward. So this is the guy who really did you know that he, he blazed a trail for everybody in the, in the un- or in the unofficial production realm. Uh, he's now involved with a local um, creation of a new kind of convention in his area in Ticonderoga, New York. And uh, so it made the local NPR uh, item. We would like to, uh, it's also an MP3. So you can actually listen to the interview with James Colley. So, uh, give, your, give you guys a little bit of support for uh, our friends over in uh, Phase 2 and, and James Colley. And just, you know, like he said, he's absolutely, um, it just shows you what kind of dedicated people can do without a Hollywood budget. Phase two, as you can imagine, doesn't get the money that Axanar does, um, but it probably brings in about what continues can. Would you say that? I mean, there's there's a lot of fans of both, and they're both continuing stories of the original series, so they do tend to have a lot in common. Yeah, um, I think as far, I, I, but they're still quite different in production value. I don't want to say that one is better than the other. I would well, say um, the, uh, it, there, it's hence. like it's like. It's like comparing two different kinds of apples mm-hmm. because that's really what they are. I mean, that's exactly right. You, when you compare uh, continuous Axonar, now you're going into apples and oranges, right. but apples and plums. But they're both, yeah. but, but they're both fruit. Uh, Whereas with TOA or with uh, continues and uh, new voyages, it's it's kind of like you know two different kinds of, of apples or two different Granny kinds Smith of and Green. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Granny Smith and Red Delicious. Yeah, totally exactly. Went. But you, I want you, a plum now. You guys get it. I mean, it's yeah. it, they're, they're the same thing, but they're just different enough. And what I have noticed is um, uh, with, with continues, um, they're not th- th- there isn't as many special effect shots as New Voyages does. They they uh, New Voyages is not afraid to use special effects and, uh, and and go with space battles and and all kinds of fun stuff. So, um, so, th- so there is definitely a difference in, in, in the kinds of stories that each tell, if that makes sense. It, it does. It, it makes perfect sense. But we would like to congratulate uh, James on moving forward and having something additional to draw people to Ticonderoga and to the... Um, uh, the beautiful sets that you've always had and talk about somebody who is just as, and probably the penultimate, um, tale oriented person. Those sets are as detailed and as, and as true to the original 
as anything that's out there. Somebody um, please make a TNG set. I know. <laughs> Sorry. I know. God. That's what I, I'll tell you. If there's it's a too big. production, I'll, what would you say? Nick? TNG is too big. The fucking Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I, I, I just, just want, I just want somebody set. to start doing TNG fan productions. It'd be awesome. Yeah. I totally agree. Um, I mean, as much as I like the original series, I mean, it, I would, you know what, I would love to. And Nick, you'd probably, I would love to see Enterprise stuff. Mm-hmm. I would love yeah. to see the Romulan War. I know that there's a couple of them out there right now, but they're not finished. Damn it, go, go find them, finish them. I would love to see like a high quality Romulan well, War. Awesome. Since since we're we're talking, um, uh, so. Fan productions. Um, yes. Kickstarter time. Yeah, go for it. All right. So Pacific uh, Two Hundred One, which we had mentioned last week, um, they uh, they have twenty one days to go. They've already generated nine thousand thirty five dollars out of their twenty thousand dollar goal. Um, this is the I, I would I think I would describe it as ultra realistic uh, take on Star Trek. I mean the light, the way they handle the lighting and and everything, it just looks amazing. So, um, check this out if it's something that you want to support. Please do. If not, you know, uh, that, that that's that's fine. But uh, we're just putting it out there. And uh, I had mentioned last week the Janeway Chronicles. Uh, they, their Kickstarter has finally launched. <laughs> um, it, it it's definitely a. a Low budget. It's definitely a low budget uh, fan production, but it seems like it it, it could be fun. Uh, They have 26 days to go. Um, They've earned 180 out of $5,000 is what they're looking for. So uh, check them out. If there's something that you can get behind, just maybe for cheesy factor, please do. (laughs) And also the, uh, the first drunken Star Trek hit this weekend. Oh, yes, and it did. the lovely, very awesome Evie Vincent was on our show from Vegas, so look for that interview. She is hilarious, and uh, it, watch it because I'm Deanna Troy, bitch, makes it all worth it. Yeah, this is, this is, I, I, I started watching it this morning, and I I'm have Deanna not finished Troy, it. bitch. So, Mike, explain to people what drunken Star Trek is. Okay, this is, Basically, what they do is, uh, if you've seen like those videos where they drunk history on on History Channel where, or where, Comedy Central, yeah, okay. or even uh, the the what was the one that was on Geek and Sundry as a kids, the kids, where the kids where would tell a, tell a story, story and then somebody yes. else would reenact it. Yes, well, this is exactly the same thing, except it's drunk people telling story, talking about Star Trek episodes, trying to, you know. Talk about what, you know, explain Tell the what story. happens. Explain Tell the, the story, story. <laughs> while drunk, and <laughs> and of course they they have actors that act out certain portions of it, so they cut back and forth, and it's just it's hilarious, <laughs> and of course not suitable for for work, <laughs> but totally it's not well work. well worth checking out. I, I I'm enjoying this, and you want to talk about no budget, which makes it even more hilarious. The 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 wormhole effect. <laughs> oh my god! Their shuttlecraft is someone's car. <laughs> yeah, that's so great. That's great. I love it. And everyone is wearing costumes. Like, like uh, uh, the episode is uh, the price. So you know, it's got the the, the the Barzan wormhole, and they have the Barzans in there. And <laughs> oh is, that the, is that the mop? The, 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 yeah, they're wearing a mop, and it's. And she described them as as wearing mops and uh, wearing mops on their heads with retainers. With retainers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that too good for Thomas huh? playing that? I uh, think that I'm was sure. her. I'm not sure, but that was. Uh, it, it, it's fun if if you just want to to to, to laugh at, at some funny shit. Yeah, definitely check out Drunken Star Trek. And then the very last line of it from her is hilarious. I haven't seen the end. No spoilers. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Mad Wolf. That's really wow. funny. Yeah. The, um... yeah. And, and the subject uh, talking about the episode, which, by the way, the episode is The Price, the one with the wormhole that they're bidding on. Yes. 
she was definitely and if you listen to our interview evie said that she was she was definitely drunk when they got there that's great <laughs> yes and you'll recognize her terry oh i know i will yeah, yeah I'm sure I will. They're they're drinking throughout. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Evie, the the one thing I will say is Paps Blue Ribbon. Really, it's so hipster. I, I thought better of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mike, any other uh, fan or? Uh... Um, I think that's all I saw this week. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot. But again, um, there's there's a lot going on. So yeah. There is a little bit of news that did come out from uh, Roger Friedman Showbiz 411. Hollywood to the Hudson. Did you say Hollywood for the Huzzies? That, uh, Hudson. Hollywood oh. to the Hudson. It is a, 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 a little news item that shows that William Shatner is going preparing the official biography of Leonard. Oh. Yeah. Uh, wow. The book is tentatively called Leonard, A 50-Year Friendship. And is due from St. Martin's Press in 20. 20- so that's actually right on. Kind of cool. Um, I know that they were very close friends. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be interesting, and it probably will go. I don't know. Want to say hand in hand, but I'm because William Shatner was such a big supporter of For the Love of Spock, which is the documentary that Adam Nimoy has uh, funded and is moving forward with. I'm sure the two will probably um, be very complementary of each other. Would assume. You know what's made me happy so far? And I'm knocking on wood. Ever since the last <clears throat> incident, where we all said, really? Um, certain parties have not been in the news for trashing other people. Um, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I think I do. I think so. And that makes me happy. Very, very much. Because so. hopefully, It'll stay hopefully like that. that was the, 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 the low point. I hope it was. Terry, I don't know if you saw, I posted this week, somebody was talking about Into Darkness, and they said that movie was the Kobayashi Maru for fans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I have to say, even with the spoilers that came out over the past two weeks for Star Trek Beyond, and this week on Simon Says, Star Trek Movie News. <laughs> There is a there is a, a link out there, and I I wish I could post it for you, but it is from Cinema Blend, and Cinema Blend has a whole bunch of video shit that starts right off the bat. So I couldn't um uh, post it for you because I didn't want to be bothered by all the goddamn noise. But um, Simon Pegg did come out, and he was, as you can imagine, a tad disappointed in the spoilers that were released. <laughs> but what I think is funny is that. So they come out from fans or from paparazzi probably is really what it was. Is paparazzi, you know, people go out, take pictures, and they sell the pictures to the tabloids. And the tabloids know that this shit will sell, right? That's how it works. Um, so somebody kind of snuck onto the set, took a bunch of pictures of forums of the actors, of Simon Pegg, of Christopher Pine, and of the actress who plays the Steve. new Eve alien and stuff. And that's um, Steve. That's something he would do. <laughs> and and as you can imagine, he he kind of got a little bent out of shape. Simon Pegg got a little bent out of shape and gave brief about the spoilers. And I can kind of understand where he's saying, except for the fact that almost immediately after he says this, Idris Elba tweets photos from the set and uh, gives little teasers about his his costume. Now I'm sure that Idris Elba's tweets were probably pre-approved. But pre-approved spoilers are spoilers, and and it, you're working with, um, and especially it, you know, and especially coming from a company like Bad Robot and the people who work in and around it, who are artists when it comes to trying to throw people off a scent, and over years have come to the point now where we don't believe anything you fucking say anymore because after how you handled Star Trek Into Darkness. That it doesn't matter anymore. We don't care what you have to say anymore. 
We're going to look to see, is this something we want to waste our money on? And I swear to God, that's what this is. So we, you now have a fandom who is already pissed off because you've tweaked with us in Star Trek in darkness. And then you come around saying, oh, but we don't want these spoilers. We want these spoilers that we can control. And then we're just going to pull the rug out from underneath you anyway. So excuse us if we happen to be cynical, jaded, uh, uh, jaded and cynical. So, yeah, I can kind of understand where you're coming from, Simon, except for the fact that I don't understand where you're coming and, and don't blame us because we want to know what's going on with the production. Blame your former or current boss. Sure. And look at what he's going to, and, and just be jealous because he's going to make a billion dollars on opening weekend, all right? Uh, okay. Speaking of a billion dollars, uh, did you guys see that Minions? Yeah, crossed the, a billion. Crossed a billion? Global. Yeah. Wow. Was it the fastest movie to do so? It was. I think it was like, <laughs> I think it was like the third time that it's happened this year, third or eighth time it's happened this year for, um, from uh, uh, Universal. Wow. And through what movies? We're talking... Minions? They didn't They didn't list what movies, but it's, I think it's the eighth time it's happened this year. And it's the third time for Universal, I think is what it was. I wish I had saved the article. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, Fathom Events has a couple of things that are coming out right now, too. Ooh, I, just, I okay. know they're not Star Trek related, but I thought they were fun. Um, for Lord of the Rings fans or Hobbit fans... Fathom Events going to be the host of three specific nights over two weeks of uh, the extended versions of the Hobbit trilogy for it. So the Ho- the Hobbit <laughs> and the Unexpected Journey. What? Oh, and then um, I'm sorry. Fantastic Four has a nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's it was. Yeah, but it you was, know what? It's interesting. Minions only has a fifty four percent. But it's kids. How many people have kids? Uh, no, How many I know. People I'm have just kids? saying. And you take them out, and you've now, sold one family five tickets. Now, I don't think we've talked about this. I will give credit to Rotten to, uh, to Rotten Tomatoes. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> <laughs> to Bad Robot for something. Oh, Mission Impossible got a ninety three percent. I heard it was Ro- fun. Rotation. Wow! I heard it was really, really good. They, I've heard it's the best of the series. Which is saying something because you know, it has nothing to do with just the name. Um, but yeah, it, it one of the other things that came out was, um, oh, well, I told you about the Fathom event that, that Lord of the Rings is going to be doing. And there's also another one that they're going to be doing that was really fun. Oh, well, I'll remember it. Um, the big news for Star Trek Next Generation fans is the high def uh, suit. The series is the high def version of the series is now available on Netflix. And there's still a rumor as to the idea that TNG's love, or I mean, uh, DS9's love hasn't been lost yet. So there is still right hope on. that DS9 will get the high definition treatment. But I had, um, I had see. seen that the TNG version uh, that's on Netflix has several artifacts that were uh, fixed that were not fixed in the Blu-ray. In the Blu-ray? Really? Yeah, there were some, some, a few, a few odds and ends that 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 you know were 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 untouched, and apparently they went back and fixed them for the Netflix releases. So, um, it was a, a a Trek Core article. I don't have it here though. So yeah, Trek Core, you know, Adam, I'm so jealous of you. I'm just they have such a great relationship with Paramount and CBS right now. Mm-hmm. Um that they get a lot of exclusives because they handle them right. Right. I mean, they just mm-hmm. do, they handle them right. And, um, I'm just so proud. I'm so proud of my friends over at check Corps. They do a lot of really great stuff. And, and congrats. Just, every time they get something, I'm like, awesome. Damn. That's awesome. <laughs> um, shall we move on to convention news? Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Shall we just start right off the bat with a um, Las Vegas update? Are, is, are we still talking Vegas, right? Uh, we are. We're talking about oh, Vegas. yes. You're coming to Vegas, right? Star Trek Las Vegas may take place every August, but on this show... This is where we hang out the rest of the year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the crew has been fatigued now from so many months in space, and they need to take a break. The landing party has been down to check out the terrain. They say there's only plant life living on this lovely rock, but a rodent up here's wearing a vest. 
Okay. Um, first and foremost, there's the tickets for Star Trek uh, Las Vegas STLV for 2016 have uh, still not been put up for sale. Um, I am sure in my heart now that the reason why that is is because they're trying to find a way for their servers to handle it. Um, gold is already sold it's, out. It's going to be like... Uh, it's it's going to be It's going to be like Comic-Con. It's yeah, that's, I was just thinking that. It's going to sell out in minutes. Um, there's a... Um, the one thing you can do, however, is you can still use the Star Trek code to, to, to get your room. It is my understanding at least two or three of the nights for that code use are now sold out. The, the block of rooms that Creation has set aside, at least three of those nights are sold out using the code, which gives you the, the, the break, the financial per night break. And I believe those nights are Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. Oddly enough, I think they had a bigger block of rooms for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so it's my understanding those nights are still available using the code. Um, it is possible to make a reservation for the first three nights without the code use and still get a pretty decent room rate if you just contact the hotel directly and um, talk to a reservation agent as opposed to using the pass key code mm -hmm. um, through the Internet. And if you're a Total Rewards member, you get through much easier. I much found that easier. Out. And, and not the least of which is if you've got any money on that Total Rewards or any of those points on those Total Rewards, just use your Total Rewards. It's possible, to, depending on how many points you have to get for your nights. Yeah. Um, now, alternative what the hotels. Fuck? I know. Alternative hotels are the Gold Coast, which is across the street. It is an older hotel. It is not as nice. I will be just very blunt with you. It's a faded elegance. <laughs> That's but a nice descriptor. Still, and, but everybody swears by it. the fact is they have a 24 hour TGI Fridays. So if yeah, you, they you, do. You, <laughs> so if you really need French fries at three o'clock in the morning, you can get over there. And also, too, they have an award winning noodle house, a Chinese noodle house. It is um, good. And and it made one of Condé Nast's top ten Chinese restaurants in the United States. Let's just put it that way. Um, so the food over there is is great. It's just you have just to just be up. ready when you're unlike walking through the Rio in costume where people don't even turn. Uh, if you're walking through the Gold Coast and all the <laughs> it, blue hairs will stop and turn, they at will you. stop and look at you like what because the hell are you? <laughs> it really is. It, it's it's it reminds me of Atlantic it's, City. It's old. I guess. Like, I there's smoke in the walls that's yeah. been there since Bugsy Siegel. It's seriously, it's that. Now, but you can get cheap rooms. So yes. if you're looking just for a place to crash, and you and don't care what it looks like, and you don't care how smoky it is and whatever, it's, Gold Coast is a place to be. Now, no, if you're looking to spend more money, oh, go ahead, Nick. No, no joking here. They've installed a new crosswalk which is a huge yeah, thing it's a big because thing. people would cross the street and it's a busy street jaywalk. that it's on and they put in a crosswalk which is a huge thing and i heard a bunch of people saying how much better it was just walking across the street it is so much easier now because you can you can cut through the parking structure yeah. from the gold coast through the parking structure out to a brand new mid block crosswalk yeah. And get the light now to cross safely because people had been hit and killed there before. So, um, and then it brings you right into the entrance to the Rio, which brings you in right at, at the buffet. Right at the buffet in the Chinese dim sum place. In the tin, in the dim sum place. So it's, it's great news for, uh, those. Now, if you're, you're looking to spend a little bit more money to stay in, uh, more modern rooms, a cr catty corner. From the Rio is a little Palms. bit more money. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more money uh, is the Palms. The Palms Hotel is across the street. It's a bit more upscale, much more modern, very trendy, always has been. And um, I, I'm sure that, uh, but if you're looking for a quieter place to stay, I'm saying that might be your best bet. I know a lot of people use the, um, the, the nearby kind of, what do you call them, like the residence inns and things like that. There's a couple of those around as well. So there's a lot of people who like to have full kitchens. There's a couple within very easy driving distance. Or um, cab. Or cab, yeah. Easy, easy peasy stuff. Uh, the, the, Don't ever say that again, please. <laughs> the 
the strip is a hell of a walk. You have to get yeah. it. There's just it's it's a mile and a half to the strip. And that doesn't sound like a lot to some, but at three in the morning after being at the masquerade, it's a long walk. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> um, hey, look at the lights over there. Well, some That's of the things bridge. that the, the the one nice thing that did come out is they already have a um, the beginnings of a, a content or a, a guest list for 2016. Um, we do know that they're going to have over 100 guests again for 2016. Got there. We are all hoping, and we totally expect a few really great surprises for the 50th anniversary. Um, the tentative guest list is William Shatner, of course, uh, Anthony Montgomery, Armin Shimmerman, Brent Spiner, Casey Biggs, Sirik Lofton, Deanna Muldaur. Yay! Uh, Ethan Phillips, Garrett Wong, Gary Lockwood, Gates McFadden, Hallie Todd, Jeffrey Combs, Jerry Ryan, A.G. Hertzler, Jonathan Frakes, LeVar Burton, Marina Sirtis, Max Grudenchik, Michael Dorn, Michael Westmore. Now, here's what's interesting. Michael Westmore will be doing a Borg presentation. So to have the Master of Makeup doing a Borg presentation next year is going to be pretty amazing. Little little something on Max Grudenchik for you, Terry. Yeah. So last night, or yesterday, I was watching Apollo 13. I oh. was gaming, and it was on. Did you know Max was in that? Um, he was a mission control guy. Yeah. Because I'm looking, and I'm like, that guy looks familiar. No. No. <laughs> no. So I go to IMDb, and there it is. Yeah. So not only does that movie have Clint Howard, yeah. it's got Max Grudenchik. Yeah. All these Star Trek. Um, Clint Howard. Oh, and uh, we'll pick up with Aaron in a second. Nana uh, is yes. uh, Nicole DeBoer, Renee, hey. uh, yeah, Renee Abergenois, Robert Beltran, Robert O'Reilly, Robin Curtis, mm. Sally Kellerman, mm. Susie Plaxon, mm. Harry Farrell, mm. Vaughn Armstrong, and mm. Walter Koenig. So these are the people that have announced their attendance. At That's pretty cool. Now, awesome, awesome uh, convention news. Well, uh, we, we, real quick, we had mentioned uh, um, Jonathan Frakes. Yeah. Uh, did you see that he's going to be on Face Off this week? Yes, with uh, Michael Dorn. That's pretty cool. I understood cool. Michael Dorn was going to be in it as well. That's pretty cool. Speaking of uh, convention news, Terry. Which convention? S- well, September 19th and 20th, the beautiful yes. Janice and I will be yes. at Hartford Comic Con. Yay! Uh, among those there will be DJ Britt. Uh, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Michael J. White, uh, Ernie Hudson. Oh, very cool. It, Kelly Who, Christy Romano, uh, uh, boy, my computer, uh, Trina Nis- Nishimura, who's a voiceover. She, I've seen her before. She is, uh, boy, you talk about just no filters, nonstop, awesome <laughs> ADD panelist. She chases squirrels worse than we do. <laughs> uh, Nikki Klein from Battlestar Galactica will be there. Very cool. Uh, as well as many cosplayers and and artists. And then, so that's so that's the nineteenth and twentieth. Then on the twenty fifth and twenty seventh, yeah. the lovely Janice and I will be at Baltimore, Baltimore Comic Con. Comic-Con. I know. Which those two conventions will then lead to something special for Busy Little Beaver. I'm very excited about that. You have yes. no idea how excited I am about that. I'm really excited. about should we say it now? Or we... It's about freaking time. <laughs> Following those two conventions, we will have the start of <coughs> of uh, Gettysburg's Address. It will be my... Right now I'm planning on monthly uh, comic book themed and, and comic movies and uh, podcast. Busy Little Beaver production. Very cool. Awesome. So excited about that. And um, the lovely Jan- – hello. Now see Mad Wolf. Now you're posting properly. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. And the lovely, the lovely Janice uh, will be helping us out with some of these. Oh, she'll be your co-host? Uh, well, she'll be with me at the conventions. Oh, okay. She's the beauty. I'm the brains. Actually, she's the beauty and the brains. I'll, I'll be nice. She is. Yeah, I was going to say something about you, so, but I'll, I, I just decided to be nice. I'm her manservant. <laughs> I please her. Is there any other... Um, oh, boy. 
Um, oh, hey, far, you wanted to start. No, as far as the convention was concerned, kind of getting back on that real quick, I did want to let everybody know. You saw me tweet the other uh, yesterday. Um, we have run into a small snag uh, with regards to getting our booths for next year. We're hoping that everything will work itself out. I'm sure that it will. Um, it's just uh, I'm not exactly sure what's really going on yet. I had heard a rumor that they were going to be redoing the vendor's room or the vendor's area for next year. And apparently that is the case. I received an email from Leticia uh, Serafin over at Creation Entertainment, who was unable to take our review, our, our, our reservations for our booths until the booths and until the vendor's room has been reorganized. So I don't know if that means they're putting in a different level of a vendor table or what is going on? I also heard a rumor regarding a potential media row. So I don't know if we're being reclassified or not. That might be part of our problem. So if we are reclassified as a non-retail vendor, they may put us in the media row and have the choice. I don't know. And we'll I, own that bitch. Well, I'm hoping that they allow us the room that we need. That's my concern, right? Yeah. Otherwise, we may have to get creative. So, whatever. I want I wanted a double booth. I wanted two booths this year and now I'm being told, Oh, we can't take your three thousand dollars. I don't know. So mm. there. Um yeah, I'm a little as you can tell, I'm a little bit yeah eve nervous about this. And the reason why is because we were told when we were at the convention that here you can pre order for next year. So I went up to him and I said, The card that I want to put this on is in New Mexico. I don't have it with me. They were, and I said, and you're only going to be open for two hours. They only open the slot for two hours. And Leticia said, no problem. Call me. So I called her. She didn't answer her phone. She has no voicemail. So I had to mm. email her and say, I called you. You did not answer. Here is an email with said, and she was like, and she didn't answer. So I sent her another email saying here, I'm trying to give you money. I'm trying to use the pre-order that you promised me and unfortunately bit put out. <clears throat> but whatever. The good news is it looks like, uh, well, we'll, at least we know that uh, some of our friends will be back in the vendors. I'm sure we will too. It's just now I have to wait for them to make it available for order online. That kind of stuff. It's smart to have the media row in the vendor's room. Yeah. I would hope so, but I, I'll tell we're just, you. We're just hoping it's not like against the far back wall where no one's going to be, where, you know, no I traffic. Like, I just my again, my concern is I, I want the space. I want a place to hang our banners. I want a place to, I want curtains. You know? I, I'm, I want some drapes. I want some chiffon. Well, after what Star Trek Online went through. Yeah. You know, having to have to pay for to get that piping put in so they can hang their damn banner behind their table. Yeah, that's what I want to avoid. And um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm. I'm. I know that this is a new thing for creation as well. And and I know that they're going to be dealing with a lot of grief. And so I'm trying not to be a griefer. But damn it. <laughs> It's always weird. I always get concerned when somebody won't take their money. You know, it's just a, a it is a concern. Yeah. Um. So, real quick, gaming news. Um, real, real, real quick. Uh, because uh, we had uh, talked about conventions. Um, there was a <laughs> looks like uh, 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 Sesame Street. They did a they did their own version of uh san diego the san diego comic con <laughs> and they had a, a, a muppet or a, a character in a kirk outfit that apparently did a pretty good uh, impersonation of of uh of william shatner as kirk <laughs> so huh. those are called furries mike i'm just going to <laughs> share that and there's video and you get to see the the kirk character in there so yeah Oh, okay. that's cute. I see what you're saying. That in the show they had their own little convention. They had their own little convention. Oh, and that's cute. Numeric con. <laughs> well, that's awesome because it's telling kids, you know, it's another Deep generation. Culture. Yeah, it's okay. So yeah, okay. Oh uh, my god. So we are now 
going to game talk news? about gaming news. Yeah. I want to play Star Trek Online. Engineering here. Warp engines are online. Course laid in, Captain. Engage. Your ship. Warning. Ship is under attack. Your crew. Move out. Your destiny. All right, so uh, has anybody else had trouble logging into stuff? I have not. Uh, yesterday, apparently so. Uh, oh, you you didn't try, though? I, I, I did you try were... and never uh-huh. made it. Okay, I didn't make it either. I, I got in every time on... I've tried. Yeah, I was playing a little bit on Friday night when I saw somebody. It was actually Black Magnum who was in TeamSpeak with me. And What's he said on? that he was having a uh, login server disconnect. And yep. I thought, oh, I'm not having any problems because I'm in game. Well, come to find out, that was probably the beginning. Uh, so there, there seems to be issues out there which are oddly enough are not being addressed in um, in Twitter to let people know. Oh, gee, there is a problem. So I was hearing that uh, the issue um, is only f- affecting North America, which and is where a, did you hear that? Um, well. A few people that I talked to outside of North America were having no trouble at all. Okay. But everyone that I talked to, you know, within North America were, were ha- having issues. Paul, Paul, I haven't either. He had no issues. I wonder um, if it's the West Coast or something. I don't we're know. both in the Could Northeast. Be. Yeah. I wonder Atlantic if it's... Atlantic Northeast. It's, it's just very, very odd. Because, I, like I said, I didn't have any problems on Friday night it, early in the evening. I finished um, Crystalline. Oh, so did I. I, I, I I'm not on I was, all of them, Terry, or on one. <laughs> I was okay. I was hoping to to get in there and and get one step closer because I need uh, I think like two it, more. And that's kind of where the reason why I brought it up. Isn't it weird how it always seems to happen right before the end or towards the end of a an event that people need to complete something. Maybe that, because a thousand and one more people are trying to log on. I'm to, wondering oh, if shit, that has something to, to do. With, yeah, I have to do the crystal entity. I only have three more left, and this is my only weekend. I, I'm yeah. I'm not sure if it's their servers are overloaded or what the hell's going on, but I I do have to say. Yeah, I finished I, mine on I miss, Thursday. I miss having I miss ha- and I know Laughing Trend is only one person, so I'm not blaming her. Okay, I'm not. She, She's very laughing, deserves, and very trendy. She's and she. Bust her ass, right? She she's now doing for all intent and purposes two people's jobs. She's trying to maintain all of the community, which is kind of crazy enough as it is. Plus, she's responsible for all the social media stuff, so far as I can tell. So the person that did, laughing trendy deserves a couple of days off. She deserves a weekend. But damn it, there should be somebody in a backup role putting something out on Twitter or on Facebook saying we are having issues. Please be patient. Because right now it's it's we're getting nothing. You get nothing, and you look for them for news. Going, is it my computer or is it you? I would it's like to me. have that. Back. It's you. <laughs> well, and the only way that they'd be able to do that is if they had a a, a general account rather than the you know people's in, uh, individual accounts. For instance, uh, they do have a general account. What, then I where do I get all it. my news from? From, from, from laughing, laughing, trendy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. <laughs> she does it on both, and and they do have a general account. It's Star Trek Online. <laughs> speaking, speaking of, which, and they have the Facebook page. That's not Laughing Trendy's page. That's that's page. true. And but... They could just post a little something saying. We're hearing, we are, it's just like they do with pretty much every other game, which is a little note saying, we're hearing of issues with logon server issues in a certain region. It's being looked into. At least sell, tell me, it's being looked into. Or what I'm getting now is, oh, we've got server logon issues. Nobody knows about it at Star Trek Online. The servers aren't being touched or even looked at. And I'm, and what my brain says is, oh, we're not going to touch it until Monday or Tuesday when there's somebody on, on duty. If that's the case, then that's the case. I won't even try to log into your damn game over the weekend. Said duty. Said duty. Now, speaking of issues and Star Trek Online, 
Um, real, real quick before before we get into that, if you don't mind, I just want to send a quick shout out to Paul um, and his uh, his podcast, uh, The Author's Outpost, which is Yay. for Foundry authors. So uh, there you go. Check it out. <laughs> Nick? Because Paul didn't have enough to do. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of issues in Star Trek Online, yeah. I, I would like for Terry and I to address someone very special to us. And this is Miss Zero. Because this week we found out just how many issues Miss Zero has. <laughs> I don't know why that dream happened. And I'm not sure what it entailed other than somebody with a shotgun. But we're here for you, sweetie. We love you. There, there you go. There you go. We love you. Love we you, love Zero. you, darling. But please, get some help. Well, I, I kind of want to touch on that, too. It's the fa- the fa- the foundry is still operable. It's still working. Wow. Is this a record? Right? Well, no, I want to talk about that because Zero <laughs> is involved with that, right? She's yes, she still is. Putting, she's still putting she's stuff the producer. <laughs> she's As the I producer. found out at dinner that night. <laughs> yeah. And and it is nice to know that, that Paul's uh, still working on, on podcasting about the foundry because it is. They're also doing a new uh, Starbase UGC series. Great. Oh, that's right. Well, the it, not unlike what they did with um, purity, yeah, purity, which is nice to know. Uh, but it is nice to know that you know the the foundry still is one of those very unique things in an MMO or any game. Everybody, if you've never played Star Trek Online or if you're interested in making playable content for your story, for a story that you want to create, you can do it. You can go into Star Trek Online and create a. a a story that everybody else can play. And not a lot of people understand that the Foundry exists and, and can be used in those missions can be played by anybody else in the game. It's really kind of cool, and it's very unique. Do it. Do it. It's a, it's a way to earn experience if you're already at 60 and you're still trying to get your, 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 your specializations up. You know, that's a really good point. You'll get XP for all of that, so that's mm-hmm. great. Um, and and Paul, and I, dude, go ahead. I was just going to point out, and they have that that new tech in there to where, uh, as you're flying around, you get yep. uh, random. Um, nice. That's uh, how I did that Borg missions. one, Mike. I talked about. It's yeah. it's at the Borg battlefield, and I loved that mission. That's awesome. So, so it, it, I mean, because it's a random. I mean, you can be f- literally flying anywhere, and all of a sudden have you know. At a system, yeah. have, th- have go- three missions to, 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 to pick from to, and to pick from, and and the next time you drive or you next time you fly by it, it might be a completely you might have a completely missions. different set of missions. Exactly. Now, if really you look cool. up the Captain PF Dennis missions, I want you to be aware, the man doesn't do one-offs; they are arcs. Yeah. So be prepared. <laughs> Paul doesn't do anything small. No, but he does them awesome. They're awesome. No. So um, and Paul wanted me to remind everybody that be- it has been a long time since we've talked about the Foundry. And the reason why is because it was kind of dying on the vine, right? It was just kind of nothing was being ha- nothing was being done with it. Um, the assets hadn't changed. But that's not true. Zero has put a lot of assets into the Foundry now. So a lot of Her new stories can boy. be told. Huh? Her and Tumor Boy. Yeah. And, and, and thank you, Nick. And they put so much into the Foundry now to make the Foundry authors feel like they have um, more assets to choose from, more stories they can tell. And um, we just want to really say, go for it. Uh, The Foundry is not dead. And I actually hope that we're starting to see a a kind of a rebirth of its importance. Yeah, great. (laughs) Uh, And uh, all right, so we... We're kind of done with the news. How about that? We got through the news, and we still have things to talk about. Yeah. Um. Real quick. Um. I, I had. I was talking with Terry about it this morning. Uh. Forbes has been, um, on fire when, in terms of Star Trek. Uh. They have. Uh, they have released that I've seen four articles. <laughs> Dealing with different aspects of, of Trek. Um, for instance, uh, w- w- uh, there's a new column, The Philosophy of Star Trek, uh, where they ask questions like, is the Prime Directive ethical? Um, there's uh, uh, 
uh, another one, the geology of Star Trek, and I mean the physics of Star Trek. So, so they're they're like coming out with like all these different um, articles. I think it's kind of cool that Forbes of all things is. Uh, is is you know acknowledging you know the geek culture and its impact and and kind of sort of uh you know looking at it and talking about it okay. i know that i know no morning, we magnum. talked about what's going what was on that, Nick? sugar morning magnum what's going yeah. on <laughs> uh yeah forbes magazine i think learned last year when they had one of their tech reporters do a kind of a geek column on star trek and their their hit rate probably exploded <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that i think that is very possible that um they they realized oh gee we can probably get a lot of ad click if we start catering to this uh, this group of people who seems to you know, everything that's put out there so it was a business move by forbes which i think is really kind of funny and it shows you how business works and that is diversify your product if your market expands <laughs> So their market expanded, and now they're starting to go, hey, we can get a lot of click from Star Trek fans. Let's cater to these guys. So I think they have a new geek uh, a new geek panel. I think they have guest writers who come in and, and, and do freelance uh, articles, as well as a, an editor who, who's, I'm sure it's still their tech editor, um, who does this stuff, which I think is kind of fun because it allows them to kind of expand their market a little bit of their readership base because not a lot of people, you know, let's face it, they were so non-diverse beforehand. It was all money, money, money. Realizing that talk about money in a different But geeks topic. are money. They are totally money. And right now that's the way to go. So it, it's an unusual but it, educational thing to look at and go, wow, Forbes, this is a great lesson on how business works. Forbes is seeing it and they're going for it. And that's kind of mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, and, I, I thought and, it was... and their articles are really good. Their yeah, they are. are really, really yeah. Good. Well, speaking of geeks and money, and you talked about leaks earlier mm-hmm. and, and all of that, I have a question. If we were to build, say, if we in, – in another universe, you know, if you make it so, it happens in another universe. So the G&T show is as fucking huge as any talk show. What and reality we're gonna is this have, again? <laughs> and we're going to have the first uh, G&T convention. And we've got Marvel and Warner Brothers and all of that. The, 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 the old media way of showing a trailer just for the convention we've talked about is out. Because people are recording on their phones, they're they're doing all of that, and it's being oh, yeah, posted yeah, yeah. the minute the lights go up. Right, the moment that you put anything in a con, consider it public. What what would be what? How would we, if if Bad Robot was there and they had a preview for Star Trek Beyond, how would we handle it? Would how would you want us to handle it? Maybe everybody that's there gets a a some kind of tchotchke. Uh, and as soon as it's done there, it, we put it up on the web. How would we want to do it? If we were the ones operating the convention? Yes. Actually, there's <laughs> bullshit again. There's probably an agreement already in place as to how that's handled. Every media outlet receives either a non-disclosure agreement, right, which you have to agree to to put something forward to allow them to put something forward, or – you have freedom to discuss and distribute one or the other. It's rarely somebody comes in and goes, you can kind of talk about it, but you kind of can't. No, I know. But what I'm saying is we have the, they, the para, uh, bad robot brings the clip, right? We are authorized. You know, they show it there. They uh, show it there. Right? They show it there and all of that. And then we have the ability, you know, the agreement that as soon as, as soon as the lights come up, it goes onto our website. Okay. What would you do to make it more special for the people in attendance? Since, because that's the big thing is now they're not the only ones getting. Yes, they get to see it two minutes before everybody else. No, but, they get to see it live. They okay. get to be with the people who are presenting it. Yeah, to me that's eh, because they can't watch it over and over again like we can once it goes up on the website <laughs> and, and pick it. Well, apart. then you can stay home and and not until. But what I'm saying I'm sorry, is, w- but you're, would you're, you have something? 
like t-shirts for everybody in attendance or or some kind of tchotchke you know what i mean yeah to make it more special and that would have to come from the people who are putting that out if that's fine me as I'm, the I'm con saying, operator what would you want to do what what would you think would be the if best way if i was bad robot no as the con- the convention operator has nothing to do with it all they're doing is providing the stage if if bad robot wants to make the people feel special for doing it then they can put out the money for buying the, the t-shirts but that's I'm trying to play a game here and you're getting all janice and technical well that's what i'm saying is that if if why would I, as a, as a con operator, waste money on providing somebody just paid me to sit in that seat so they could be there live? And I'm probably having to pay a cut to somebody else for, oh, yeah, the hotel or the convention center. So the, my profit ratio is already low. Now, if I were bad robot and I wanted to draw people in and to make people feel special, which is a PR a heaven, right? Bad robot made me feel good for coming in and feeling special. And that and that um, premiere of that trailer was awesome, and I can out out. And now I'm going to talk about this. You are buying word of mouth with something like that. Hell yeah, Bad Robot should do something like that, or any producer who should do something like that. It was like um, I went to Comic Con in San Diego, and you know what? It, it's simple as it was. You know what made me feel special for the Big Bang Theory panel, which was awesome, by the way. They had the bare naked ladies come in on the stage live, played the theme song, and everybody got a printed version of the lyrics so we could all sing along. <laughs> that was an experience you can't get over the internet. Right. That was CBS. Because the trailer itself, it's going to be up the minute it, it, it's shown. Yep. So, it is. Marv. <sighs> Did Disney, I mean, Disney, Disney knew. I mean, the moment that. The yes, Star Mark, Trek- God forbid they make a profit from the event. You, <laughs> Oh, Christ. Then don't go to any convention, Marv. Just stay at home <laughs> with Cheetos on your naked chest and go, I wish I could go to a convention, but I'm not going to give them any profit. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> uh, for our listeners, Marv just put in there something about he doesn't want to par- he doesn't want to see somebody else profit from the event. Well, then, then don't go. Then don't go. Then don't um, go and go. Geez, I wish I had been there. <laughs> well, Disney handled it right with the Star Wars thing, right? Yes, during, and that's during Comic Con, that was knew, brilliant. And they knew how it was going to handle. They knew that it was going to get. It was just going to kind of go live, and that's just what happens. The fact just is, just the is trailer you're making... doesn't matter anymore. Like they had that new, what's that rope? The new, the new robot, um, the, the 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 beach ball. Yeah, I don't know its oh, name right now. No but... shit. R2... He being there live, yes. that mattered. Seeing that mattered. It, seeing it on seeing it on video later, yeah, that was cool. But damn, that would have been really amazing to see live, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, th- there's there is that aspect of going to a convention and seeing a panel live really should outweigh what you see um, being presented. So the people who are presenting the trailer, the people who are being there live, is the live experience that you just won't be able to get on video. It's there is something very very different, palpably so, to have people around you screaming and crying and you know uh, the castle. Uh, I went to a castle panel at Star Trek. I'm, I'm sorry, at, at San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, it's and Star of course, Trek. that would. Yeah, well, well, Nathan Fillion. I always think of he should have been the next Kirk. My brain yeah. just says it. He should have been, but um, the Nathan Fillion was there. The entire cast of Castle was there, and it and they're all really really big Trekkies on top of it. So the 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 woman who plays his daughter in right. castle she's adorable she's come to find out when she walks on stage she's wearing a a star trek uniform on stage and i'm like and she was just like she was all giddy because she had they had just come off their first episode that was directed by jonathan Frakes. so she was <laughs> she was all nice. excited she was all excited about that but to be there as well they they did something really unique and that was they gave everybody a water bottle a steel water bottle that had castle on it so they were handing these bottles out to the people as you walked into the the panel uh it was the first panel of the day so they knew that they could do it where everybody who would sit there would have this water bottle in a box but of those say 2500 water bottles that they handed out to people as they were walking in 
50 of them had certificates to have a, in a meeting with the cast after the pan. So there was very cool. a certificate on the inside. That's something you would never get if you weren't right. going there live, even though what See, they that, were talking about talking. was spoilers. Yeah. So, but that came from ABC. That came from Disney. That was, it wasn't like Comic Con was putting out that money. It came from the, the, I, the, that's what I'm saying though. But yeah, you should do that. But it made people go, oh, look, I got this water bottle. I was there. And that's how it And then they open it up. They open it up and 50 people scream. <laughs> it was really cool. You could see this one girl. She was jumping up and down. It was really funny. Because I'll tell you, and you know this, I am not, for one thing, Comic-Con, I'm not going to because it's going to set off my PTSD in a major way. Uh with Water that many people bottles. in that short, but waiting eight hours to get into Hall H to see something be in the back row, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I had what about us? What about us? What about us? Water bottles, um, mac and cheese, Anthony. <laughs> but you're right; it is something you have to kind of weigh out as an attendee. San Diego Comic Con is so huge right now that really do have to weigh out whether or not it's worth it for you to stand yeah. in line to for me to get in and now mind you i had a media pass for me to get into that castle um panel i had to wake up at four get down to to the convention center by four thirty to stand in line and i was still like for 300 of media with yeah of media that's, it that's, was nuts that's it was, yeah. counterproductive. It was counterproductive. But I got in. But I got in. Um, barely. <laughs> barely. It was crazy. And uh, that's kind of that was the last time I went to San Diego Comic Con. It was just because it, 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 you have to have, there's no way you can cover it all. There's no way that you can cover mm -hmm. it all. There's no, and, that's, and you're lucky to get into two, maybe three panels. And that's why we say support your local, yep. smaller conventions. Yeah. I'm I all mean, up for that. Let me see what Farpoint's announced so far, if anything. Uh, oh, something big's coming up with Farpoint. What is it? Yeah. God damn it. What did they just – they just sent out an announcement to everybody. Yeah. What was it? Oh, it's the first ever Farpoint crowdfunding event. Oh, that's it. They're going to crowdfund. That was kind of interesting. And it's great because I know that they're looking to expand. And because it's a fan-run um, and fan-organized production, I think that's really great. So, yeah. Uh, so far this year, they've already announced Sean Mayer, who's Simon Tan on Firefly and Shrapnel on Arrow. And that's all they've announced so far, but it's in February. That's still – see, it's a small convention. That's a pretty good guess. Yeah. And I know that uh, Wizard World is moving into the smaller zones as well. Uh, Wizard World will be having a Albuquerque – they took over what was called the Albuquerque Comic Expo. They sold it to Wizard World, so Wizard World is helping. so support your local your local conventions. Yep, uh, you'll find yourself having a more pleasant experience. Oh, surely even Farpoint, I've made more friends, and it, you see, you know, to to an extent, we see it at Vegas, where you see the same people every year, but this is so much smaller, you know, with a couple of thousand compared to tens of thousands. And uh, you, you do, you make friendships that, that last for, for a long time. Yep. So, Mike, what kind of announcement? Oh, go ahead. And you get to meet the celebrities in a whole different environment, like, you know, yes. at, at the bar less, or, or, much or, or, less or stressful, eating right. dinner. Yeah. And, and by eating dinner, I don't mean walking up and going, excuse me, are you John Barrowman? But, you know, they sit down next to you and they're like, hey, how are you enjoying the convention? Yeah. Mikey, what an Um... Galaxy Quest is going to be on Amazon. So opposed <laughs> to this. Are you? Yes. I thought it was fun. Right. They're doing a series, at, at, though, right? Yeah, it's yes. a series. And that's why I'm opposed. It was fun as a one-off movie, as, a, a, as an homage and a spoof, and now it's going to... It, it, it's taking what that was and kind of making it real, which was not the point. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced yet. It's going to take a bit for me to be all. I think we need to talk about a whole bunch of surveys that are out there now. Surveys? Why, Terry, whatever do you mean? 
Well, we, we, we have this project, this as yet unclosed project. Tea project. Tea project, um, which is important to us. And we're hoping that you guys get the word out and get as many people as you can to take these uh, polls that we are putting out there kind of piecemeal. We don't want to bombard everybody all at once, but I believe right now we have the TOS poll and the TNG poll out there. Uh, DS9 is forthcoming. Um, and then also uh, Voyager and Enterprise will follow that. And all we're asking you to do is to rate the episodes one by one as to whether or not they were excellent all the way down to I did not watch. Uh, not. It's just as important for us to know that you haven't seen an episode as it is for us to think for you to think that because not seeing an episode is very different from I think it sucks entirely. Um, so we're collecting this raw data for a project that we are uh, handle in the in the future. So please check out our website. Mike and Janet and everybody are posting these polls from time to time on Twitter and Facebook and um, all of our other media sites as well. Please, 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 please pull if you haven't already. And um, don't forget, each page is a season, so there's multiple pages in the poll. So there's three POS, and there's seven in. Make sure to give yourself plenty of time. Yes. If you don't remember an episode, Memory Alpha can help. The TNG one, if you haven't seen all the episodes or you have to do a little bit of research to remind yourself what the episodes are, it can take a little bit of time, so don't. But mm-hmm. we're we're asking your patience. Please get through. Come it on, if you can. Anything that has monkey in it. <laughs> Survey monkey. Um, Automatic win. Totally. What else, Mikey? Uh, we received an email from Larry, but my email program is kind of. Uh... We do need to talk. We we what, <laughs> what, we we talked to Larry briefly at the convention, but we're gonna have. I would like to talk to him again. Bring him Larry on. Larry Nemechek. He Larry fills you with geeky goodness, and he's he's got some very interesting things coming up with his new kind of. Uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to make it sound old. It's not. It's a really cool subscription service that he's got now called Portal Forty Seven, and uh, you'll be able to gain access to some really unique uh, information by subbing to his program. Talked briefly about it at the convention, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about it when fully live. Not quite there yet, right, Mike? Uh, last I heard it, it, it's not, uh, he, he's released, uh, several details. Uh, there's, uh, um, kind of like a brochure that I've seen. Uh, so just, uh, email Larry, Larry at nemechek.com. I believe it is. <laughs> yeah. Larry at Larry nemechek.com. Yep. Uh, put GNT show. Christ, uh, why do you have to make it so hard? <laughs> G- GNT show, uh, portal 41 in, in the 47. Oh, excuse me, 47, <laughs> in the subject line, and uh, he will send you um, out some information. Um, but let's see, uh, on speaker uh, number four, um, he's released or announced, and that is um, in honor of Voyager's 20th anniversary. Very cool. If I can get it open. So, yeah, it's uh, celebrating Voyager's 20th anniversary. Um and he's got, you know, he dug into his archives and he's uh, found a, a lot of long form interviews. These are like hour, hour and a half long interviews with the people behind uh, the, the, the creation of Voyager. Um, and uh, they, I guess they talk about uh, uh, taking care of the ter- care, uh, caretaker. So, you know, it's about, you know, the, the pr- producing the premiere episode. Uh, people like Jerry Taylor, Richard James, uh, Winrich, Rick Colby, Dan Curry, etc. So, um, cool. so th- that's for sale now on his site, uh, LarryNemechek.com, uh, and it sells for about twenty one ninety nine. In- that's including postage. And I'm just going to put this out here. While we were at the Star Trek convention, uh, we had the amazing and wonderful opportunity to sit down and talk with. Uh, Terry Erdman and Paula Block. These two people are Trek extraordinaire <laughs> authors. They do both fiction and nonfiction writing for Star Trek. And they most recently came out with a beautiful and ex- it's huge. It's just this huge book on the fashion of 
Star Trek, we have several signed or autographed copies of the cover of this book. These are these beautiful kind of um, frayed advertising. What do you? What would you call them, Nick? The the posters, but they're thicker than a poster. It's like a card. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, what would you call them? The 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 posters? Or the, the, the the book jackets. The uh, yeah. Uh, the, it's the it's the book covers that like you'll see an author have uh, on a stand on the on their their panel. Right. So it, they're these beautiful. So it's this. It and it is the life size cover of the book. So it's very very large. It's a big coffee table book. Both Paula and Terry have autographed several of these for the G and T show. They were so, so I, good. And so I would like to be able to get these out to our listeners if you're interested because they're absolutely stunning. If you guys haven't seen the cover of the book, um, I'm sure we can dig it up for you here real quick. Uh, Star Trek fashion. Ta-da. And uh, get these out. And we will Star have Trek? some for our 24-hour uh, 24 hours of G&T. Yes. Um, so I'm thinking – oh, there they are. Star Trek costumes. Uh, anybody done it yet? Oh, there we go. So there's a beautiful, it's called uh, Star Trek Costumes, Five Decades of Fashion from the Final Frontier. That's the title of the book. It's a big, beautiful, um, original series gold uh, uniform. And then there's the there's five pictures below it, which is Picard, Seven of Nine, Worf, uh, Spock, and the most recent Uhura with the um, kind of scuba gear that she's wearing it is the image that image which is the stock thing that we have both we have several of these autographed so if uh if you are interested in getting a copy of one of these autographs please uh email me with i don't know something simple i'll say the first 10 people to get them over to me with their favorite their favorite star trek costume uh email us at hosts and gnt show.com make sure you put your name address uh, and where you would like it to be mailed to that one I can't nothing 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 special. We'll have a few left for the Halloween. We still have plenty. So um they t- they signed quite a bit of them for us, which was just really remarkable. They're so that was awesome. Um, yeah, they did what, like fifty of them? Oh, I don't know. Probably twenty five. We also have for the twenty four hours of G and T a very special item autographed by Ms. Kipley Brown. Right. Card it with is her lips on it. Yeah, it's a G and T card that she signed, and she left her her lovely lip marks on. Um, she does that really well too. <laughs> don't forget our karaoke contest is go- is still ongoing. So uh, if you have uh, video evidence of uh, you singing in karaoke and would like a chance to enter a five year mission to sign- signed autographed whatever uh discography um go ahead and uh send us your videos cool um i think there's anything else i can't i I, i'm almost positive there's more i know there is it will well i know it i know it i can't think of it either we're kind of stressed for the day but I think that's it for now. Um, pay attention to our website when the show comes out. The show notes will probably include the stuff we missed. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of it. And um, until next time for episode. By the way, I will not be around next weekend. I'm going to the Toto Yes concert at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. So I'm going to go play with my my childhood friends. I'm going to have fun. So I don't know Toto. if somebody's going to be. I, somebody's going to be covering for me while I'm gone. I don't know. Oh, oh I just remembered something. I'm oh. sorry. Um, I'm a Nerd Block subscriber. Yes. And I had heard that there's going to be um, a Star Trek item in, in September's box. Well, they're also going to have um, an exclusive Star Wars The Force Awakens items as as well. But um, there's also going to be a Star Trek item um, in, in this upcoming Nerd Block box. So, Very cool. Yeah, I'm looking I hope forward to that. I hope it's something more than a, 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 a car. Thing. A car air freshener. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know. I, they haven't said what it is. Um, I'm kind of hoping it's a ship, but we will we'll find out. 
And I do have to say on that, that monthly subscriber thing, I'm a, a, I did like the loot crate that came out. <laughs> I have a little with, joker. With the villains? Yeah. yeah I have a little joker great. for you. That was my first loot crate. Oh, that was, you got it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you got the apron. Is that yes. not the funniest thing ever? It, it is. Okay, the apron rocked. The apron, for those, I don't, I didn't even watch Big Bang, or I mean, uh, the, uh, Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. I didn't even watch Breaking Bad, but I knew that fucking apron. Um, did you now? Did you which which Venom coffee mug did you get? Did you get the regular one or the the other one? The black I got, or the red? Yeah, I got the black. I got the red. Do you want it? Yeah, see. No, it's okay. I just see. I, which no, one you I got. really won't use it because. Oh yeah, like, I'll get it next year then. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll put I'll put it in. This is one thing about these things is we always trade off what we don't want. It was like, oh yeah, so and so. The little Joker that. thing is awesome. The little Joker thing is really cute. Um, and I'm, I'm actually kind of sad because I only knew two really big Batman fans in my life and you were one of them, Nick, and my friend Henry was the other. And Henry was the person who usually was the recipient of Henry passed. He is the person I lost last week. He passed away in a, we're not exactly sure what happened, but, um, I'm dead in his car last week, which is why I was such a bummed. I miss him I'm very much. I'm sorry to hear that. Didn't yeah. Know. He was a sweet, sweet. He's the guy who I, who called, we talked for like three hours on the first night of the convention. Henry was a good guy. Um, but I'm also a subscriber to the Marvel Collector Series, the Collector Boxes. And I have to say, I have yet to get one of these boxes and not just go totally ape shit. I just love them. Uh, you always get a t-shirt and you always get a pop vinyl, which is so cute. Um, and this week's was uh, the Secret Wars for Marvel. So I got a... A Miss Thor, the the female Thor, yeah, pop vinyl. I got a Spider Man pop vinyl, and this very cool Miss Thor t shirt. The, the Wouldn't Secret it be Wars cool Avengers. if CBS did something like this with Star Trek? Oh yeah, yeah, I would like that too. That would be really really awesome. I would subscribe to a Star Trek only box. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, would that be the shit? I would dump Loot Crate to go to Star Wars. That would be really yeah, cool. yeah. Okay, I, I would get rid of Nerd Block. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it for this week. Uh, I believe you can join us next next week for episode 205. Um, until then, live long and prosper. Kapla. Joel on True, mac and cheese, bitches. Music for the G&T Show is provided by Warp 11, Andrew Allen, Grethor, and Five Year Mission. This has been a Busy Little Beaver production.